Do you feel like you've been learning to code forever, but still can't build anything real? Here's the truth. AI has changed the way developers learn and write code. Imagine writing code so effectively with AI that you can start building real projects in weeks instead of months. Most people learn coding the old school way, cramming tutorials and copying code, but they forget to actually understand it. But here's the solution. Start with a problem, Tell AI what you want and solve the problem with the help of AI. When I used to face coding errors in the early days of my career, I used to look for solutions in random books, endless tutorials and whatnot. But in this video, I'll show you exactly how to use AI to learn coding faster and more effectively. If I had to learn coding all over again, I'd use AI from day one and you should too. I've been coding for years and I've seen this industry change dramatically, but nothing. Absolutely nothing has changed the game as much as AI has in the last two years. But before you get excited, here's the trick. AI alone doesn't work here. If you let AI run your entire code base, you're not learning to code. You are dependent on a robot which will abandon you the moment there is a problem. You'll be paying a handsome check to a real developer to fix the mess it created. Because you did not write the code yourself, it's hard for you to fix it. Well, yeah, you could go back to AI and ask it to fix it. But in reality, the more you chat with an AI tool, it gets worse. Inventing errors that don't exist, it starts contradicting itself or suggesting fixes that break other parts of your application. So instead of helping you, it actually makes it worse. And therefore, you need to know the fundamentals like all developers have been doing it so far. But here's the tweak. If someone is learning to code today, AI is your best friend not to solve your problems, but to make you a better developer faster. The first step is to pick the right programming language and the right AI tool. Learning to code is exactly like learning to cook. When you're new, you want something quick, easy to cook and helps you keep your stomach full without overwhelming you. I learned coding when I was 18. I started with C followed by C++ and then Java. And for the majority of my career, I've been coding on Apex, proprietary language by Salesforce. But if I could start over, I would begin with Python. The syntax in this language is so clean and readable that you can focus on the actual problem solving instead of dealing with confusing punctuations and wording. And the second part would be to pick the right AI tool. I would start with ChatGPT and Perplexity. You can use any other tool, but here's why I like them both. Perplexity helps you find the right answers and it also gives you references to the resources from where it found that answer. So you know that the information is legit. And ChatGPT is more like a casual conversational friend who makes you feel comfortable. You might have observed that doesn't matter how silly your question is, ChatGPT always starts the response with a positive note. Some people say it's a yes man, but when you're overwhelmed, you need that warm touch in the conversations and ChatGPT does that exactly for you. So there is a physiological concept called cognitive load theory and a lot of people struggle with it, including myself. Cognitive load theory says that our brain has a limited processing capacity. When you're learning to cook for the first time, your brain is on fire, not just the stove. You're thinking, how much salt should I add? Is the oil hot enough? You're overanalyzing everything even though all you're making is just an omelette. When you're learning to code, you face this similar issue. You're trying to understand the syntax, logic, problem statement, error messages, development environment, terminal commands. It's like whenever you have learned something new in the code, you realize that it's just the tip of the iceberg. And this significantly increases the cognitive load. And if I would be learning to code, I wouldn't do it this way. I would pick a handful of resources and use AI to complement my learning. Instead of switching between 10 tabs, 20 tutorials and 30 video lectures, you can just ask one AI assistant to explain the problem you're stuck on in the simplest possible way. It's like having a mentor who never gets tired, who never judges you and adapts to your level every single time. If you're looking for resources on where to start, you can probably look at courses on Educative. I like this particular course on Educative to learn Python called as Learn Python. This course takes a super hands-on approach to help you learn Python from scratch, solving small, fun challenges that actually make sense in everyday life. You'll pick up the basics like taking input, making decisions, handling errors, and writing simple logic. And just so you know, this course, along with all the courses on Educative, have been created by ex-Mang engineers. So you're definitely learning from the best. 
I'll put the link down below. You can check it to get some discounts and it also helps my channel. Learning new things without consistently practicing what you've already learned is a waste of time. And that's why step three is to practice a lot. And how you do that is what I like to call the Fry method. First thing is to focus on active recall and testing. As soon as you've learned a new concept, say data structures, you need to constantly test yourself. This practice of active recall helps encode information into long-term memory. And yes, AI can help you here. Ask ChatGPT to test your knowledge by asking questions and gradually increasing the difficulty level. Second point is to practice spaced repetition. Make sure to consistently practice things that you've already learned with the help of spaced repetition. Review the concepts a day or two after you've learned them. Then gradually increase the time in between reviews. This will make sure that you don't forget the concepts entirely. And the third part is integrate with AI. So you took the course, you had the right AI tools. Now you have a problem and and you need to write code. Here's the formula to tackle it. Let's say you have to write a program to display the Fibonacci series. Step one is to ask AI to explain the solution in plain, simple language. For simplicity, let's take English as an example. We are not coding just yet. We are only thinking of the solution for now. The Fibonacci series is a sequence where each number is the sum of the previous two numbers. It starts with zero and one. If we go step by step, we begin with zero and one, and then keep adding the last two numbers to get the next one until we have generated as many numbers as needed. Then comes the next step to write a pseudo code. This is not real code, but it helps you organize your thoughts. For example, start with two numbers, zero and one. Then create an empty list called FIP series and add zero and one to it. For each new number up to the desired length, add the last two numbers in the list and append the result to the list. Finally, print the full list. The last step is to translate pseudocode into real code. Through this process, you don't just memorize code. You understand how it works. With the help of AI, you train your brain to think logically first and code second, which is exactly how confident programmers are built. Step four is to build real world projects and get certifications. So now that you have the confidence in your basics, the last step in learning to code is developing legit end-to-end real-world projects. The resource I mentioned earlier gives you the opportunity to create a real-world project. And no, this doesn't have to be super complicated. You don't need to create the next Google or Facebook. Of course, eventually you will get there, but not at the beginning. When you're starting out, you need to create a simple project that will help you apply the knowledge that you've acquired. And one example project you can do is a simple personal habit tracker. This will teach you a little bit of backend, a bit of front end, and build relevant skills in Python that you can actually apply in the future, either for a software engineering internship or an actual job. And also it helps you keep a track of your habits. At this point, if you think, oh, I don't want to make a habit tracker, it's too boring. Well. I got you. There are other projects like Temperature Converter, Code Machine, Adventure Story, a game for guessing number. You have a lot of options. And through this, you can develop some cool stuff that will look too impressive on your CV or LinkedIn profile. Remember, it's not about what you build right now, but how you build it. So yeah, if I were learning to code again, I'd skip the burnout and the tutorial maze and learn coding the smarter way with AI as my co-pilot. The truth is that coding is not going anywhere. It's just evolving. And if you evolve with it, you will never be left behind. The coders who will thrive in this new world are not the ones who know every command, but the ones who can use AI to their leverage to build anything. If you found the resource on Python helpful, you might also like these resources to level up your game in AI. All of them are complete beginner friendly and you do not require any prerequisite knowledge. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care and bye bye.